Hey there, everybody. How's it going? I'm Travis. I'm Phil Stock, hosting our comic book roundtable um, show tonight, and I have with us right off to my left or right. I'm never quite sure because I'm hiding in my corner. We have Tom Hippies Collectible. And Good evening, everybody. Next to him, we have James Crowder, seventy-seven. And on the far end, we have a comic book mom, Audrey. Hello. Hey. Hey. Um, we don't have Rob with us tonight. He is more than not feeling well. He's got some stuff going on. I don't know if he wants that exactly public as to what he's got going on. Um, but needless to say, he will be off his feet. Is that, is that me? No. Okay. That was mom. Sorry. My bad. Okay. <laughs> He, he will um, he will be off his feet for a few days, so I'm sure he'll be able to catch up on all those comics he's been talking about that he needs to read. So it's going to be a, a, a good thing all in all. But he, he we have him in, in our thoughts, and um, I hear he's watching tonight. So um, take it easy. Get, get good drugs, and um, we hope to see you back when you're all better. I see a rowdy girl is on. Uh, Rob's wife is on. She says Rob is watching on my iPad in his hospital bed. Appendix surgery tomorrow morning. Yay! Sweet. Okay, so everybody does know. I, I wasn't sure yeah. if I was supposed to announce that or not. I, I, yeah, I was, just saw it on the. Uh, I was going to name the podcast. Save, okay, I was going to name the podcast. Um, save Rob's appendix, but I wasn't sure he'd appreciate that. So, <laughs> anyway, right. save the clock tower. Uh, no. <laughs> so, so we're gonna jump. We're gonna jump right into right into talking comics. Um, I'll, I'll say up front, a lot of us um, aren't up to speed on our current books. We don't get them shipped to us as fast enough, me included, to talk necessarily current books. We'll talk some current books. I think James is up to date on current books, and so if he wants to talk current books, we'll talk his current books. Otherwise, we're gonna stick with the same format that we've had going forward. We'll talk a little DC. We'll talk a little Marvel. We'll talk a little independent, and then kind of. You know, wrap up with whatever we want to talk about at the end there, whether that be back up, you know, back issues or, or whatever we have going on. So, um, I guess to start out, with, we'll we'll talk DC. Does anybody have some DC books they've been reading that they want to talk about, Ralph? Hand. You just read the uh, the Batman Year Zero stuff, which is pretty good. You like you like it? Yes, we just got it in the mail. So, both Craig and I read it already. You were, yes, I liked you were, it. like the story and the art was very good on that. Yes. Yes. You, I'm excited. You weren't, cu see. you weren't cussing up a storm, going, "Oh no, they're they're just telling us another origin story." No, I don't care about that. As long as it's a good story, I really don't care. Uh, I'm the one that cussed it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not just you. Not just you. There's a bunch of people that are well, up, up in arms over the back of that. But that's the only thumbs down I give on it. Uh, like like what comic book mom just said. Good story, great art, but mm -hmm. I mean, how many more sure. different origin stories? I mean, you have to look. I mean, I can understand that on some new people who just maybe the last ten years or so have been reading, but you got to understand, I've been reading comics since 1955. You know how many origins I've read? Yeah. Different things. <laughs> I'm sick of it. But sometimes they tie in new stuff that you haven't seen before, like the Green Lantern Secret Origins, probably one of my favorite arcs that uh, Jeff Johns did, and. That was another good one, too. Same kind of thing, but I liked what he did with it. I don't know. I For me, on that, on that Batman Year Zero, uh, on that sure. Batman Year Zero, that, what I'm most curious about, like those first four or five pages, you know, where where something disastrous mm -hmm. has obviously happened. You know, the, the city's flooded out. Yeah, and, and the kid. The yeah. Yeah. All, all, um, walking dead like with his crossbow and all this yes. stuff. I'm really curious to see what the hell's going on with that. So, and like I said, it was your review that made me more curious, and that's why I've decided to continue it. Yeah. I this week I read a bunch of Justice League books. I read the Justice League of America, Justice League, and Justice League Dark. Um, of course, we're getting ready to roll into the Trinity War thing. What that starts next month, right? For most of it, I guess. This September? week, Pandora came what? out. Oh, this yes. month. Oh, this uh, month the Trinity War stuff starts. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think, I think this coming week, um, one of them comes out. Justice League or whatever one starts it off. I believe is this week. Mm. 
Oh, okay. I read the Pandora issue. What did you guys think of the Pandora issue? I, yeah, I didn't mind it. I didn't think it was as bad as what I, some people, I think, had said. I, Pandora issue one. Yeah, I just... I read Stranger, and I didn't like that. <laughs> I tried that one. So, I haven't picked up Pandora. I mean, I, I don't know. I just have some uneasy feeling about it. And so I've been kind of waiting for somebody to talk about it and convince me that I should be getting it. Now I've seen some I've seen some pictures of some future um, Pandora issues where it's got like Gigantic in it. I love the character Gigantica, and this is a you know, they've kind of retooled her um, for the people who aren't familiar with her. She's a you know giant woman basically. She can grow to immense size. Um, mm -hmm. I love the the new costume they've kind of put her in. It's not a lot of these new costumes for for the um, the society of villains, the women look more like hotty toddies than they necessarily do like people who could kick your ass, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But they have her dressed in, you know, flat boots, sports bra. I mean, she looks like somebody that's a bruiser. They've kind of drawn her with kind of a uh, a tougher looking face and stuff. So I was kind of excited by that. It made me think, well, maybe I should be picking up Pandora, but I'm just still kind of... So it's, it's a pretty good story to kick things off. I really yeah. like yeah, I don't think you need this issue though. I think you could start with the second issue because this one just like basically told you she released the sins. She's trying to fight against them. That's pretty much the whole story. Well, I mean, that's kind of the first half, but I thought the second half kind of brought in more of uh, the wizard and you know all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Is is she really the one who opened it? Like you never see her open the box. Yeah. So. Oh. Uh, to me, that's kind of interesting, and like the end of it, I don't want to tell everybody what happens. A lot. I know, Travis, you haven't read it yet, and I'm sure yeah. not everybody has, but at the end of it, it kind of brings up a lot of questions and leading into the Trinity Wars, or at least what I think Trinity Wars is going to be about. So I really like it. I'm, I'm actually going to start pulling it since uh, I enjoyed the issue that much. So. Yeah, I might I might get the other couple issues. Is it like a mini series, or what is it supposed to be? That's what I don't understand. No, I think it's going to be an ongoing. Oh. I might get the next issue. I think it really prelude. I mean, I, I don't think it was. A, it's not a necessary book, but where it lists right, it like right. that, where it says prelude. I, I don't think it's absolutely necessary that you get it for the Trinity War. I think you would get by without it. But oh, yeah, sure I thought it was. That. I thought it was good enough to pick up though to to read it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I like yeah. some of those fringe books, so. Because I kind of wondered, I thought maybe you wouldn't need to pick up any of those side, any of those side books for the Trinity War. I mean, if you were, if you're reading the Justice League books, you're pretty much getting the war itself in that, right? Is what I would yeah. guess. Yeah. It so, might uh, kind of enhance this, I'm sure. This. Bit. Sure. You know, I thought this from uh, Pam Stranger issue ten. I thought this was going to be part of uh, the Trinity Wars, but I guess it's not till the next issue. But this was really good. No, oh, I didn't like it. <laughs> Really? I, you know what? I read the page. Rob, the page. she didn't say that, Rob. You I know. I, I keep trying it. Like, I didn't like it at the beginning, and Craig did, so I we kept getting it for a while, and then I think he just kind of didn't care about it anymore, and did, did I was like, well, get this one and try it. I still don't like it. Oh, I liked it. I really didn't <laughs> get anything. Like <laughs> so the, the primary story it's, run is going to be in Justice League of America, and other issues are going to be like little side stories that go off to, you know. Now, yeah, all Justice, three, Justice, three books. Justice League of America. Yeah, it's all going to be Justice League? Yeah, yeah it's all, all three, it's all three, League, all three books. Justice League, Justice League of America, and Justice League Dark. Each one gets two issues, I believe. It, it, yeah, and six parts. The, it, yeah. Oh, okay. Because we weren't but, normally getting just like dark, but we're getting the issues that tie into this. Yeah. So, um, Justice League of America. I don't know how many of you guys read this book. Um, of course, uh, last issue, everybody freaked out because at the end of the issue, Catwoman gets shot in the head. You know, and they show her getting her basically, you know, <laughs> what looks like her brain's blown out. And of course, typical internet. The internet erupts and freaks out, and it goes. Like you know, and of course here we got our stereotypical coffee cover. Does do any of you guys read Justice League of America? Oh yeah. Not yet, but I know what happens. Yeah, uh, I mean, so do we? 
Really, really, do people really think that they shot Catwoman and killed her? I mean, I just that's, I didn't understand that. As everybody's like totally freaking out about the fact that, um, you know, and I kind of wondered, you know, maybe it was going to be, you know, Black Orchid faking, you know, Catwoman. But I just thought it was kind of amusing that, and of course, and then, and then this issue they give it the, this coffin to try and continue to sell this whole idea that they killed Catwoman, which is, of course, ridiculous. They're not going to, sh- you know, actually kill Catwoman, but. So you I don't think know. it was uh, somebody impersonating Catwoman, or? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't. I don't want to spoil it, but oh, okay. <laughs> she's not dead. Let's put it that way. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I really, I really like, I like the issue. I, I'm surprised at how much I like um, Justice League of America. I, I was apprehensive going into reading out Justice League of America because the Justice League book, written by the same guy, Jeff Johns, has felt really sleepy to me up until this point. It just hasn't had a lot of energy. And I kind of was worried that this book would be the same way, but picked it up because I like the characters, um, and I, I'm really enjoying it. I'm, I'm actually liking it the best I think of all of them. Really? Of the Justice League books. Well, I don't know. I like Justice League Dark a lot too. I, I haven't read Dark, but I like Justice League better than I like Justice League of America. I'll, I'll probably only keep Justice League of America until after Trinity War, and if it doesn't pick up for me, then I'll drop it. Mm-hmm. And and Rob, good old Rob, great legend. He'll love mm-hmm. this issue because it's all. It's all Shazam. The entire this issue last week was all Shazam. The entire, the entire thing. That's and I thought it was a fun read. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I hadn't been reading the, the back part of them. Like the, the the you know, it's all the second story in Justice League, and I hadn't been reading those really. And I had to kind of catch up on them so I could go read this issue. Yeah. A lot of uh, people said they weren't reading that backup. I don't understand why. That was like the best part of the Justice League books. I thought so too for a I while because really like- I thought. Because I thought the main, I thought the main story was kind of boring there for quite a while, personally. Mm-hmm. But I, I liked the the Shazam thing, so I wanted to see his origin, how that all worked. So I was excited to have this entire issue just be, just be that to finally get it out there. I really, really hope they use this character now that they've they've finished up here. I really do hope that they get him in the Justice League and and do something with him, or hell, give him his own book is what I really think they should. I, that's yeah. a good I, I would read it. I hope so. I love Gary Frank's art. What was that, James? So would stay on I, I kind of thought that's what the plan was, was that's why they were doing this, was kind of to test the waters to see if, you know, enough people enjoyed it that they could do a whole Shazam title. Yeah, but they've done know. that plenty of times in the past. I mean, when, when Shazam first came back in, uh, I mean, after his golden age run, what was it, the early 70s, he was popular right off the bat, but he seemed to have fizzled out very quickly, but at least with him popping up, every so often in different titles. He's one of those characters that you really like, but you don't want to you don't want to see him in a running series. Mm. But you want to see him in other titles, you want to see him appear in other titles, where if he gets his own title again, it'll be popular for a few wishes, and then they'll fizzle out again. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah. I, I, I'd like to see him try. I'd like to see him try again yeah. to see what they can do. Oh, I would too. I like Captain you know? Marvel. I've, I've liked Captain yeah. Marvel ever since the first issue I ever read, way back. Way back when I was in Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I like I like how they've retooled the character a little bit. You know, I mean, I wish they I kept him with the name Captain Marvel as opposed to Shazam, but um, <clears throat> but otherwise, I like this version of um, of Black Adam. Black Adam is one of my favorite villains. Um, I I just think he's really cool. Um, the, the end of this is awesome. The end of this, they bring in they bring in. Um, you know, Suzanne's ultimate nemesis. They they bring in the mind, right, Mister Mind? Mm-hmm. Little worm in a jar. So that was pretty cool. Um, awesome. Yeah. Um, any other yeah. any other DC books that anybody wants to talk about? Uh, we're not caught up on a lot. So. <laughs> Yeah, I wish I could say I was caught up on this one because I didn't read any of the issues prior to this, but because of uh, you uh-huh. again, Mr. Travis and Cammy, uh, I had to pick it up because just from that cover alone, I said, "Oh no, I got to yeah. check this out." Mm-hmm. And uh, the ventriloquist, the dummy. I'm curious. I, you know, uh, I have to get the issues before so I can understand more about who ven- the ventriloquist is and who the dummy is, mm-hmm. because I'm trying to figure out how is she animating. These right. characters. How is right. she animating okay. this guy, and how is she animating the people that she's obviously done in? But yeah. she is one nasty woman, that's for sure. 
Yeah, I wasn't going to continue to get background issues. Yeah, I'm not sure who's scarier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not sure who's you know, Is it her, yeah. or, or should you be more afraid of the dummy? Yeah. Dummy, right, because they're both but pretty... I'm very, very curious, I'm not going to go back. Frightening, but... Yeah. There was yeah. a couple of things in here where I was, whoa, this is the back girl. What you got there, James? Holy smokes. Uh, Green Lantern, uh, 22. Are, have you, are you guys reading the new uh, or Green Lantern uh, post Jeff Johns? Yeah, I'm. I'm going to be. I just we aren't caught up on it yet. <laughs> it's, We're it's slowly good. getting caught up on everything. So. Yeah. Uh, have you read Twenty One yet, Audrey? No. <laughs> uh, well, it's. Uh, I'm enjoying that. This is uh, Robert Vendetti is is doing the, the writing on it, and uh, you get like a Laura Flew story in Twenty One, continuing into Twenty Two, and uh, I'm sure they did that because they're bringing out his title. But uh, it's been pretty fun. Uh, I, I liked it so far. Yeah, I'm trying all of the number one issues for the all those titles too. I think I have Larflees and Red Lanterns on uh, digitally to try out. So I will be caught up. Is anybody reading Detective? I am, but I don't have that I'm issue not yet. Really, but how was it? Yeah, I'm. I will be caught up eventually. It's uh, it's okay. I mean. Uh, I like the last issue better. Uh, I think they're kind of trying to build a story with uh, some of those characters. I mean, it might be okay, but it, it's kind of one of those one of those issues that you know is probably going to read better whenever it gets into the trade point, or you get a couple more issues in, which you kind of have some of those issues that are a little slower. And that's this is one of them. That's the only problem I think. Uh, kind of now you get you know these longer story arcs. You get you know five six issue story arcs. Where you used to read comics when you were a kid, and they were you know. One issue is the whole story, and so some of them you get these slow issues, and if especially in these new titles like you're talking about, number ones, if people don't like them or they don't enjoy that first those first couple of uh, issues because they're trying to build a story that goes six issues, that people don't uh, you know pick up the rest, and it's hard to get some of these good story arcs built. Yeah. What else are you guys yeah. reading DC? Anybody pick up the the Batman, Superman. Oh yeah, I have it, but I haven't read it yet. Yeah, I haven't read it yet. So I figured because I can't decide if I want to continue Superman, if I want to go get Batman Detective. So I figured oh, I got both characters in one book, so I'll stick with that. <laughs> right. And uh, just right. To say Rowdy Rowdy Girl has uh, just posted. Oh my God, Rob loves screaming Billy Batson when he plays Injustice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what did you think? So true. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure what I think of this book. I mean, I enjoyed it. I, I, I like the art. Um, I think that um, I just got done watching a video with uh, Matt, Agent 42, 42Q, and he brings up some good points about the book that make me think I need to go back and read it again because I'm. Maybe I didn't like it as much as what I thought I liked it. I don't know, but the art doesn't doesn't always match the story. I think he's kind of right in his critique of it. So if you're interested in a negative critique of this book, go watch um, Age of Forty Two Q's um, latest video of, about this book because he he definitely um, um, has a different opinion than a lot of other people have about the book. I kind of liked it. I kind of I mean, to me, I thought the story was telling it from a they have just kind of our first meeting each other kind of a viewpoint. Yeah. And um, I, I thought it was amusing because they both have kind of snotty opinions about each other. I mean, they both think the other one is a you know, kind of a stuffed shirt kind of a deal, and I, I kind of enjoyed yeah. that. Little, yeah, that's what I like. A little bit of the, that fight mental the banner that's going on there. And I'm kind of excited because I think this arc, this first arc, doesn't this first arc put them in the... <coughs> yeah. And this first arc's going to put them in Earth 2 or running into the Earth versions of Batman Superman like that? Oh, right. Now that's interesting. But that's it for me for DC Books. I do have uh, digitally that I just tried out Am today. It was the. Uh, oh, I, don't, I can't see it on there because of my horrible Whoa. camera on my computer. 
is the uh, Batman 66. Oh, yeah. Oh, this yeah. Came out digitally. The first the, issue. That comes out on, what, what's the release date on that, the book? I don't know. It just started digitally, so I know I have the first issue ordered as well, but I, I saw think it's the like July, July 12th, I think. I think it's kind of neat in the digital format on how they're doing it. Um, so I'm kind of excited to, to try this. It's because they're doing the animated kind of transitions and stuff. Because um, I don't read a whole lot of the newer comics on the digital first, so I thought it was kind of neat with that. Is it like real campy? Like it should be. I mean, they might oh, be. It, 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 it could is, be anything but else, I, but. I think the first artist is all red, and his art kind of goes really well with that the kind of story of it. So yeah, it's only 99 cents. If anyone wants to try it digitally, I, I would suggest that because I think it's pretty neat. It says July 17th. Yeah. It's pre sale sales, the, sales for, July 17th. For the paper copy. Yeah. For the physical copy, yes. Yeah. So I might just keep getting them digitally if I kind of like it in that format. So, so in, in the digital format, they're actually using anim, actual animation, so it's, it moves. Well, it's kind of like you'll keep sliding, and then stuff keeps appearing on the on the screen. Like it doesn't all just come up at once. Like if you're reading the comic, oh. um, like one of the parts when Riddler comes in, like. It, like he starts talking and all of it says the Riddler and it changes color and stuff. So it's kind of neat on how they're using that. I think that's a neat way to use some of the newer, you know, the technology for that to get people to buy them digitally. For but do I have read the like other stuff. Do they have the pow bam zap uh, things popping up on the screen? Yeah, for you it's or? it's oh. more like that. Like it'll kind of show those. So you keep like hitting over and it keeps putting those up on the screen. It's kind of neat. Rather than I know in the paper. Oh, I wonder how that's going to translate. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of interested. We're getting the first issue, so I'll be able to compare it to what it's actually showing in that. Oh, well, you, you should do a video about that for comparison. Which you like better, the digital or the paper copy? I'd definitely be interested in that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'll definitely be reviewing that. I get a lot of stuff digital now with the new iPad, so <laughs> I like reading a lot of stuff that way. Just because we don't have a comic shop, and if I see some uh, review or something, I can just go right on there and buy it real quick. Now, is, is it typically? Cheaper. I've never bought digital, so is it typically cheaper? I mean, you get to the issues cheaper than some of the older ones are cheaper. Like depending on how old it is, it might be cheaper. And then uh, they run sales every day, so that's how I buy a lot of the stuff. Is I'll wait until they go down to ninety nine cents. Like I think I bought the whole Kingdom Come run. They were all ninety nine cents. Um, stuff like that. I'll just watch and see if it's something I wanted to read, and I can just way cheaper than buying the trade. Yeah. By the issues. So if it's not something you're interested in actually collecting, but you just want to read, then it's definitely. Yeah. Craig still likes the paper issues. Catch it on like, sale. I probably won't read yeah. the stuff. But yeah, if it's something I just want to read right away, like somebody said it sounded good or something, I can just do that quickly. So. And you don't have a shop close by, it's a good alternative. <laughs> I think it would be bad for me. I'm too impulsive. I would just be like, oh, I want that, 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 and that, and just buy a bunch of stuff. And... You have to, yeah. You have to watch yourself. You just keep buying stuff off of there. I, when they first started the digital comics and stuff, um, DC had a, a big special on Batman uh, comics. Mm -hmm. So I thought, hey, this will be a great way for me to at least read all those stories everybody's talking about that that I missed during that era of me not collecting comics. So I went and just you know, bought a ton of them that way. Just bought lots and lots of Batman that way, thinking. This is because it was all a, a you know a ninety nine cents. I thought this is going to be great, and I started reading them, and I I don't enjoy digital comics. I mean that pretty much. I read great stories; they were great stuff. You know, some Brian Arezzo, um work and stuff, and I really really liked those books, um, but it, it kind of the, drove it home to me. Yeah, they changed some of the format the now. Copy. Yeah, they made it to where you can now read it. I like the, um, there's a mode where you can turn the iPad sideways and it fills up the whole screen and you just kind of scroll down the page so you can kind of see it. But then you can also now do it in the two page format. So you can have it and it shows you two pages at once so you're not missing like the double page spreads and things like right. that. So it's they just updated it and did a lot of new stuff on there. Like they added subscriptions where you can subscribe to comics on there. And then they added, um, bundles. So now they're like bundling certain things together where I think like all of Chew or something you could get all of Chew bundled together and 
a couple other things that they're doing some new stuff in there. They just did a big update, but they're kind of changing how you can view it. Like you can still uh -huh. do that weird transition thing where it goes panel to panel, which I don't like that as well. I like that right. they changed it where it fits the page and goes like that. So. I like the new update. The new update, everybody should check in because how they changed it, I think, is a little bit better. Hmm. I'll, I'll, t I'll take a look at it because one of the things that frustrated me, the last book I bought, I got um, um, Swamp Thing, <laughs> what, issue 19, the, the WTF issue where it has the fold-out cover, right? Mm -hmm. I got that digitally first because I was going to be talking with some other guys and I wanted to make sure I read it so I could talk about it. So I went and bought the digital version of it also. I had the paper version. And with it, you don't get the, the fold-out cover when you first open it up to look at it, local book. And at the very end of it, it had, it had the two-page spread, but it's set sideways you know, on the screen. So you, you, know, you have to turn your head sideways to actually look at it, and it was really small. So you didn't get the effect of, and I paid the same price. I paid the same the same price I did for the physical copy. Whereas physical copy, I can actually open it up and enjoy it, and that digital copy, I couldn't. So that mm -hmm. just you know, for me, it was like, okay, I just know this is not not for me. But I'm really curious when they start talking about adding things to the book, like you're talking about the animation in there and stuff, as to how that's going yeah. to affect how that's going to affect the physical copy. But that's that's yeah, I would a real curiosity and a really worry yeah. for me. The fit to width thing where you can hold it sideways and it gives you like the whole page, you can just scroll down the page. I like mm -hmm. that so much better. And then it gives you the option where you can view the two pages at once. I think that's nice too. Yeah. Makes it look, you know, a lot nicer and you know, you can read it like an actual comic now rather than um, you know, doing some of the weird transitions that they had you do and you couldn't see everything on the page. I didn't like that. Right. Right. Hmm. Cool. Is uh is uh, someone's asking? Does anyone know if Six Gun is available on digital comics? Uh, you I know, I, I'm not sure. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, mm -hmm. I'd have to look that up because I'm not into digital comics. I don't know. I know you yeah. can go and um, you can go and see the um, issue one. <laughs> There's a free copy version of it online that you can go and look at. You can read it uh, on Oni Press's um, actual web page. But I don't know if they do digital comics. I would almost assume there has to be on Comixology that they have to, probably, I would guess. Almost. Okay. Audrey's looking for us right now. I'm looking. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll find um, out. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is available. Yes, Mike MC, it is available as a digital comic. Yep, volumes one through four are also on here, too. Yeah. Whoa. Anybody yeah. read uh, Earth 2 this week? Or, or, or reading it at all? I know you guys wow. have got this week's book. I'm, re I'm reading it. I'm reading it. don't have that issue, but I'm reading it. How is the yeah, we're reading it, too. Or starting, I take it? Yeah, it's, it's actually, you got... Um, Thor starting up. You've got Green Lantern back. You got Doctor Fate. I love Doctor Fate. I think that's such a good character. Um, you have the World Army and, and the Steppen Steppenwolf uh, battle getting ready to start up. This one it finally picked back up because I was getting a little bit. I, I mean, there's a lot of action always in Earth too. There's always a lot of you know battles and stuff like that, cool action scenes. But it didn't seem like the story was really going anywhere for a while, and it seems like it's picking back up again, getting into something. So only a couple more issues with that. James Robinson before you know, we drop off, and and he just is dropping off. I mean, literally, all of his open storylines are just out there. Nothing's tied up. Nothing's yeah. we, you know who the who the identity of the new Batman is. All that stuff is just so. Hmm. It'll be interesting. And what yeah, the, the writer the writer for that's writing the Injustice comic book. He's going to be yeah. the one that's writing it, and he's ensure, he's assured everybody. Look, just because just because Injustice is a dark book, he, that doesn't mean he's a dark writer. He really wants to because people are all freaking out that suddenly, you know, Earth Two, which has been kind of a pretty a pretty bright superhero book, is going to suddenly you know be all dark and sinister. He's like, no, no, that's that's how I was supposed to write that book. That's not how I'll write this book. Kind of a thing. I, I did see him on Twitter saying that. So. Uh, well. I'll be curious to see where it goes. I like those. I like those characters. So, yeah. And this is the last DC book I got this week, which was um, Batman Inc. issue twelve. 
This is really good. Uh, I think um, I kind of see where maybe they could bring Damien back uh, through reading this. Um, some really cool twists in it. Uh, I don't want to give it away because I know you guys haven't read it. I'm sure there's a lot of people that haven't read it, but if you've been reading Batman uh, and uh, or have any interest in any of the crazy stuff Grant Morrison comes up with, this is this is a really good issue. And there's only one issue left, so. Yep. Who is that Batman is holding up? Um, I'm not really sure. I think. Um, is that a clone? No, it's it's like one of um, uh, uh, Talia's uh, uh, minions. Or it's it's not the uh, the clone. Uh -huh. he, but it's a big battle in there with the clone in this. And it's like a lot of everything's coming to a head. You know, you're you're getting ready for that last uh, last issue. I was so. super mad after reading the uh, Batman 10, and then go to Batman 11, uh, the Batman Inc. 11, and I'm like, what the crap is this? <laughs> oh, yeah, with Chris Burnham wrote in, in uh, the so mad. It, it was cool, but it was like kind of, a, yeah, like a little sidetrack out of it, like what happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was so excited because I, I read like a huge chunk of the Batman Inc. all together, and after that 10 issue, I'm like, all right, this is really good. <laughs> then it goes into that number so 11 fun. issue. I didn't get issues like four and five or five and six, whatever, right before the death of Robin. and mm -hmm. um, So I've got to go back and find those issues now and so I can complete the runs. It's only 13 issues. Yeah. I don't think we're getting the whatever the special is that comes after 13, but at least not as of right now. I'm sure somebody will review it and then maybe change my mind. But Yeah, I'm kind of curious to what Chris Burnham is going to be wanting to do uh, as far as you know, is he going to get a chance at writing or you know, using some of these characters since he wrote that issue? I'd be interested to see what he could do with it. I like his art style. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm excited to read it. I get that was a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. I don't know mm -hmm. what I think of that book. <laughs> <laughs> I've liked it, although the, whole, the uh, I still always, like the Batman. That book always so feels so out of continuity, and then they kind of you know the then the only part of the continuity that seems to match up right is the the death of Damien, and and I don't know, I it just it's so it's so strange that I, I have a problem with tying the the two together. Yeah, it should be an actual read it yeah. by itself fine, but I have a problem accepting it with the rest of the DC now. Yeah. So what yeah. do you guys think? I'm kind of mad well, that I'm, I messed with the Batman and Robin I assume you guys have that. both heard that they're, they're going to be putting out that um, uh... Go ahead, Aubrey. I didn't like that it messed with the Batman and Robin book, but the the issue that we just read that I caught up on, that silent issue, that was the Wreckham issue from Batman and Robin, was my favorite one out of any of the Batman oh, stuff that I've read so far. I was like, I cannot read these books when I'm pregnant because I get so emotional <laughs> when I'm reading anything like that. I was like, Craig's like wondering why I'm like bawling while I'm reading that. Oh, I mean, yeah. And it had no words in it at all. It was just... That's a really emotional book, and that's such yeah. a... How he drew the faces and stuff, movie. where you could just see like the bottom half of his face, and it looked like he was gonna cry like several times. I'm like, oh, that got me every time. I'm sorry, which book is this? The Requiem issue from Batman and Robin. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, the silent issue. Uh, mm -hmm. That's so good. Is Travis was, still there? I was wondering what I came back into. I was I heard pregnant crying? What? What did you guys <laughs> do to this poor woman? <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh, Travis looks like he's frozen. Yep. Well, let's see here. You guys uh read anything for independent books this week? How long have you been reading? I know you you've got a pull list finally, right? Yes, I got a pull list. Uh, but but last week my first uh, first day of put picking up my pull, all I got was Captain America. It was the only book that was in my pull list. <laughs> <laughs> But I hope there's going to be more tomorrow. But I've, the only well, independent the books, the only new independence I've got I've been reading is uh, Dark Shadows. Mm. Yeah, I've seen you've been doing a lot of videos on those. Mm. Dark Shadows, yes, yes. Um, so I remember there he is. Like the 90s, maybe late 80s, early 90s, they did like a, a 
comeback series of it. Oh, the reboot series was uh, grossly terrible. Yeah, that's all I know of, of Dark Shadows. Like that's because it was a little bit before my time. I, mean, you, I, I think I've probably seen some of the old episodes, but yeah. Well, when you look at the original series, uh, I mean, you look at 1966, the uh, right. the lack of special effects and uh, you know green screening and the uh, live tape broadcasting and the bloopers and the you know cameras you know TV cameras bumping into stuff things knocking over uh, uh, forgetting their lines looking at the camera directly looking at the camera so they can read the uh, the cue cards that are on there uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it 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 still remains you know when you read, read, read the comic book if you know anything about the uh, the original TV series uh, it, it follows it pretty good but well, in the video review that I did on it, it was, you can see that it's deliberate changes so you can hurry up and get caught up with it but there's no there's some explanations that are missing you know uh, how Victoria Winters wound up in 1795 and, and and she's telling stories about Cinderella and Cinderella wasn't written until the 19th century so there's no explanation of how or why Victoria Winters is there but it's still interesting it's following the storyline of the TV series pretty good. Everybody looks the way they're supposed to look. I mean, the characters, uh, the actors that play the characters, you can identify them immediately without knowing who they are. You know, but if nobody's reading Dark Shadows, and if you're, in, you know, were a fan of the old TV series, who's putting that out? Get it. Uh, this is Dynamite Comics. Dynamite. And okay. the art is very good, very gothic. I, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. You know, like I said, a couple of things that are irking me, like you can't shoot somebody three times with a flint like flint like pistol without reloading. You know what I mean? How many how many <laughs> issues is it up to now? It's uh, issue number three. Oh, okay. So it's still early on, so you can still get the yeah. Oh yeah, that's still relatively. You know, you get like two fifty, two seventy five a piece, something like that. Travis, what were you trying to tell us before you, you disappeared once? <laughs> oh, I don't remember. I think I was going to ask if people had heard about the the um, Robin um, uh, miniseries that's coming out with Damien. Have you guys heard yeah, about that? Yeah, so talking about that. No, I haven't heard yeah, about that. Yeah, that's... What is that? Yeah, they're, they're going to put out a... Um, Kubrick is going to... Andy Kubrick's going to write and draw a miniseries of Damien as what looks like an, an adult potentially taking on the mantle of Batman. Basically, telling kind of the story that they told in issue um, 666 of, of, mm -hmm. of Batman back before the, the, the reboot. Um, mm -hmm. So obviously, it's seemingly it's going to be out of continuity and like an elsewhere book or whatever. Um, there's even been some speculation that it would even be considered a pre-Flashpoint um, story and you know, to date, DC has stayed away from anything that might go back to that that world, how the universe was before the the reboot. So, kind of a curious thing. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it. I don't. I mean, I love the character, mm -hmm. um, I, but I don't want a future book with him. I want him back now as a as a teen. If we're going to have him back, so I don't. You know, I don't know. Part of me thinks. If it sells well, maybe they'll bring the character back. You know, I don't know. I, I don't know. So I haven't decided. Uh -oh. As it gets closer, I, can't, I don't know what the release date is on it, but when it gets closer, I'll have to make a decision as to whether it's something I really want to invest in or not. Yeah. Well, that would be a miniseries, though, wouldn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Don't call me, sir. I call everybody, sir. They're or so ma'am. <laughs> So we got so we got to talk some indie books. Seems uh, Tom was talking. Um, what what about Dark Shadows? You, been reading in, in indie books. Go ahead, guys. I'm not caught up on like any independent. So <laughs> how about uh, how about this? You guys read you guys read Five Ghosts? Uh, I have them. <laughs> I just sorted the first three issues, but it's up to number four now, isn't it? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, yeah, this, <laughs> this month is the last I issue, but one. I guess. Yeah. Okay, that's all. That's what? Wait, four or five issues. Right. Five. It's a five yeah, issue. Five. Okay. Five. You, uh, this is another, number four. Okay. Another story arc. Oh. Right? 
my understanding is is it's popular enough, selling well enough that they're going to, you know, they're going to basically go on with it. I don't know if you can call it an ongoing or not, but they're going to, you know, they're going to tell another arc. Yeah, so I think that's awesome. As long as their sta their sales stay well, they're they're going to keep telling stories. I'm excited to read it. So we're trying to get caught up on stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's... We're going through all the Marvel and DC first, and then we're going to catch up on the independents. What about that one, Travis? You've been reading this one, Five Weapons? No, I haven't. I, I chose not to pick that up. I'm wondering if I made a mistake. You did. You made a big mistake. <laughs> this is really good. This is the last one, but they're, um, they're going to start an ongoing. It, on the back cover of this, it says that uh, they're going to start an ongoing starting in November, I think. And, uh, and that'll be really good. It, it's something different. I mean, it's, um, you know, like Five Ghosts really has that Silver Age feel to it. You know, it's real pulpy. And it's, I, I really enjoyed uh, Five, uh, Five Ghosts. Five Weapons has more of an anime feel to it. And uh, hmm. it's very unique in that sense where it's, it's a little bit of a different right. story. It's a fun story. And, and I kind of like those kind of offbeat little books, something different from the norm. I mean, so it's kind of the story. The basics of the of the story is is this kid is in what he's in a he's in a university for assassins, basically, and he doesn't have a weapon yeah. specialist. Yeah. I mean, everybody else specializes in something, yeah, he, he, and he, he pretty much weapon. has to figure out how to operate. Uh, yeah, he he won't use a weapon, and he has to beat these people, and it's it's pretty cool. Hmm. Might have to get the trade. Yeah, it's all these uh, like very Batman type tricks, I guess, in a lot of ways. You know, he he outsmarts people. He doesn't, you know, use his force. He doesn't use uh, weapons. He just outsmarts people and tricks them into beating themselves. Hmm. It's really fun. I like it. And what it's on issue four now, or issue five? Yeah, that was. Um, this week was the last issue. It was issue five. But they're going to start an ongoing here in November. The independents seem to be getting it the right way. Do do mini series, see how they run before they decide to have a, a permanent title on something. Good idea. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you're right, especially for some of the writers that people don't know. Mm. Guys, I read bought Lazarus? that digitally. I haven't read it yet. Uh, yeah, I read it digitally. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna really read all my like, digital comics it's, for this it's, week to do a review. It's, it's, yeah, it's it's a it's a very dark book. I mean, the future is very grim, at least in my opinion. This version of of the future is is um uh uh if you're not one of thirty families, your life. Probably isn't real great, I don't think. Uh, but by the way, this is described. I'm really curious about the book. There's, I, I, I've got a lot of questions about. I, I enjoyed the first issue. It's interesting enough that makes me want to keep reading. I trust Greg Rutka to tell us a, a good story anyway. Um, mm -hmm. But I, you know, I'm really curious about. Immediately curious about this. The main character, who's named Forever. Um, I, I'm, 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 I'm excited for the book to see what where it's going to go. But it's certainly not something that you read and. And want to put on a happy face. It's it's not that. Whereas like Five Ghosts, you read it and you're like, yay, that was fun. That's cool. You know, uh, yeah. this one's this one's much much more serious as far as just you know really being uh, kind of a grim look at a possible future of the world. But hmm. really, really, I really like it. Uh, it's one yeah. I saw the good reviews on, so I bought it digitally right away. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to pick that up, and I saw uh, Greg Rucka do the. Uh, Interview thing on uh, Charming Red, I believe, is her channel. Yeah, uh, the Moms Reeks comics on the Monday yeah. Hangout. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I saw that, and I was like, "Well, I'll, I'll try it out." And I'm glad I did. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. I have faith in Rudko. Whatever he's writing, I'm going to pick up, and until it until I'm proven wrong, I just I really enjoy just about anything that he's doing. Um, so I'll always give it a shot, and I, I'm happy. I'm happy with it. So. Let's see what other independent books that I get that I want to talk about. Um, I hope I hope nobody I hope nobody is picking up this. That's all I'll really say about it. There's I've sex number it. four. 
<laughs> Not good. Did that, did that book give you a headache? Um, no, we didn't get that far. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that book is. I haven't insulting. read any of it, so I don't what, know. <laughs> yeah, that that book is insulting. I mean, is what that book is. So yeah, you know, that uh, book well, as, as compared yeah. to to the prior three, this this one was maybe the other three. No, ones. no, it the title the title is insulting. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, oh. As, as a whole, it's it's a real disappointment. Um, not that I'm wanting sex out of it because that's the name of it. I just I I I really feel like that the the author is insulting us by by putting the book out and titling what he's titling it and, and putting some of the stuff in it that he puts in it. it, it I don't know. Nothing in it has any value. It's boring and nothing's happening, despite its name, despite the the titillating scenes that are in it. It's uh, Yeah, there, there was yeah. like a couple of ideas in it that sounded cool, and then they've just gone nowhere with them. And you're just like, what are you doing? Right. <laughs> it's like they forget to and then there's the continue, <laughs> Right, and then there's that continued fear... You know, Annoying thing where they color people's text a dozen different colors. That still just bugs the crap out of me. Huh. I'll show you. We'll see if I can get to show up on the camera. So, so when people are oh, talking, you see how the word oh. bubbles, the text is colored orange. You know, there's parts of it that are. Yellow. There's parts that are green. It makes no sense. It has no no significance. It's not like orange is when they're angry and and green is when they're envious. It. I mean, within a single sentence, it will change colors, and I don't get it. It doesn't. And so it just makes me makes me mad because it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> the art's nice, but it's not pretty enough to sell the book. And I've already talked about it more than I wanted to. <laughs> Has anybody read any of these issues, Uber? No. I read issue one or issue zero, yeah. I forget. Uh, this is uh, issue three. I, and this finally, it's getting to what the story's about. Like you're getting out of just the introduction of the, the, like the tank characters, I guess, whatever they are, the superhuman uh, soldiers. And you're getting into the real story. Um, because like the the British are, are finally going to be able to start creating the same superhumans, and uh, it, it's starting to become more of a political uh, book. Uh, you're seeing like the darkness of people, what people with power do, and how power corrupts. I think it's that's kind of the direction it's going with it. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I was actually the last issue. I was thinking I was like, well, I'm going to see what issue three is like, and if it's not great, then I'm I'm going to drop it. And I really liked issue three, so I want to keep it for a while. You're the only person I know that's picked that book up past the first issue. Yeah. Uh, I, well, what I read the, the back of it is issue zero, issue one, and it was talked about. Uh, Gillen was talking about really all this research he'd done and all the things he was doing to write in this book. And he started writing this in 2008. And this issue three is the first one that was written recently. So it's just now getting to his recent writing. So, and you really see his growth as a writer through it too. So when you get to this issue, it's written in 2012, and all the continuous ones were written in 2012, 2013. Um, you're getting more of his modern stuff. And the amount of research he's done with this and what he's trying to do, if you read the all the notes that he's put in the back of these, it adds a lot to the story. You understand more where he's coming from. Uh, I think a lot of people didn't do that, so they probably don't understand really what the story is about. Okay. I know there's a couple other people collected it, but I can't think of who they are offhand. Mm -hmm. Well, like, I know Scott, Constable Rumpster, I know he like he picked up the first issue. I don't think he went past that. Most people that I heard about it, you know, I heard about the first issue coming out, and then it was kind of, I never heard anybody talk about it after right. that. So, I mean, I mean, great to hear that it's improved. I stayed away from it because I just, the whole World War II, and I just got the impression that it was going to be about Nazis, and, and I, I didn't want to see piles of Jews and all that horrible stuff that... You haven't um, seen really, that, actually. Okay. Like, uh... 
the, the only thing they insinuate is that they were testing, um, like the the stuff that were creating the superhumans, that that's where they were doing the testing. Oh. It was like in the war camps. Yeah, I see. And it's very... I, I, yeah. <clears throat> they are in no way uh, promoting, uh, you know, Nazi stuff. I, I right. mean, I wouldn't pick it up. Like well, well, I, I thought it was something. I mean, I didn't, yeah, I mean, I didn't think that that was the case. I just, I wasn't sure how much they were going to explore that whole line of stuff and it it, it, yeah, they're not it just hurts me to to read that stuff I yeah, oh, yeah and, and when it, <laughs> that's put out by Avatar Press right um yeah Avatar yeah Avatar does some weird stuff I, I like yeah. Frost and Frost does some really dark stuff but uh, to me this is interesting because it, it really is. It's going into some of the same things that Cross explores, and it's the darkness of, of you know, what what are people capable of, and what does power do to people? And it really hasn't gone into anything with, um, you know, what happened to the Jewish people during World War II or anything like that. And, and I'm glad I couldn't, I couldn't read it if it went that direction with it. It's it's staying with the soldiers and staying in that route, oh, okay. and uh, and that to me is cool, but. <laughs> right. So that may just be me on my on my half mistakenly what I thought it was going to be for reading those initial solicitations. You know, I was yeah, I just worried that it was going to be... About it. Like a lot of people thought it was like some sort of Nazi propaganda, I think. And, you know, I, I haven't but, seen it, but I don't... You know, I don't tend to look at things that way, so maybe... No, I can't... I can't knowing the people who are working on it, knowing Kieran Gillian, no, I, I just... I would be shocked that. if that was the case. Yeah. Writing it in that light, being British, like that would seem... No. Silly to me? No. No. Yeah. And then this is another good one. Uh, suicide risk. Mike yeah, Perry. I don't have that issue yet, but I've been I've been really liking that. Yeah, I, I like his writing. You read Unwritten? Uh, no, I don't read that. I've been, I, I've been slowly picking. I've got, I have I've got a, a couple of are you there, Travis? Yeah, I'm here. Uh oh. Oh 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 oh. Am I, am I gone you again? Stopped. Okay, yeah, it was. It looked like okay. you were stop stop back stop okay. motion there. <laughs> no, you're here. You're here. Moving. Yeah, I really like the suicide risk. Um, really, the past two weeks in comics, I mean, like everything's been really good. I haven't got any books that I was just like, oh, I wish I hadn't picked that up. And I feel like last month I had a few of those. <laughs> yeah. Suicide Risk was pretty cool. And then Ten Grand, this is probably my book of the week. If anybody's not reading this, you're crazy. Like, this is so good. Yeah. Like, it's, it's uh, you know, Straczynski. And I really like Ben Temple Smith art. So. Yeah, it's, I'm a big. Uh, I'm a big. Big Ted this, uh, Smith to me, art this fan, is too. I like the book. I've enjoyed it. Yeah, th this was one I started reading and like, you know, his, his artwork hat is so moody. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, he can, everything he draw or paints, I, like, I'm not really sure how he does a lot of it. I guess it's drawing and painting mix. It's very emotional stuff, no matter what it's a picture of. And he can make some of the most disgusting scenes you've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, Audrey, I don't, I don't know if this is a book for you. I, I know some of the things. No, it, it, from when Travis reviewed it the first time, I was like, nope, that's not a book. I don't think I would. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not for everybody. It doesn't sound I mean, like you, something you like. Yeah. And, you know, you, you say that, you know, you're, you're crazy if you're not reading this, unless you're a, De a Ben Templesmith fan also. And there are people who don't care for his artwork. They don't, they don't care for that style. Yeah. And obviously, if you don't, then it's, it's not a book for you. If you have any inclination that you like Ben Templesmith's artwork, I think it's a great book just for that because it, I think this it's is. Dark mm -hmm. Like if you're a <laughs> or Hellblazer fan, like if you like Hellblazer, Constantine, that type of thing, I think this is a type of book you would like. You know, anything that delves into that darker matter, that's that's what this is about. Yep. Not for me. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, not for. <laughs> I can usually tell by watching some of your guys' reviews. I'm like, no, oh, it doesn't sure. sound like what I want. 
Well, that's the great thing and about those reviews is is you, yeah. we can you know not everybody has to buy the book. You can go okay, that's you know that's for me or that's not for me by you know by what other people are talking about. That's the awesome thing yeah. about you know about the YouTube and all these videos and stuff is is it, it, I can't pick up everything, so I, I do rely on other people to pick up some of those books to give us an idea of is that something I think I want to read or not read. So well, absolutely, like you. Like, you get me to read all kinds of books, Travis, because I know a lot of the stuff that you get is stuff that I like. You know, you're a big DC guy. I'm a big DC guy. So I really rely heavily on your – like, I picked up Baltimore the other day. You got me picking that stuff up now. <laughs> I, I, I'm so close to, to picking that one up, too, you know, but i got to be careful how many titles they start collecting again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah I, I commented on one of your videos about that, Tom. I was <laughs> you better look out. Yeah, yeah. I started off with, like, 10, 12 books on my pull list, and I'm over 40 now. Yeah, it's, e it's easy well, to do. That was the old days, in the 70s and 80s, when I was collecting 40, 50 different titles, and it got out of hand. So now I have to. You know, I'll, I'll continue with my regular runs like Captain America, Spider-Man, and uh, depending on how much I like Batman, Superman, because that way I'll have both my favorite, two favorite DC characters in one book instead of deciding action or Superman, Adventures of Superman, Detective, Batman, because there's too many, too many titles. So if I could pick that one book, and if Superman, Batman does that for me, I'll be happy with that. But the independence is what's taken me over. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So much, yeah. Yeah, and there's a, they just, like, the Image Expo just announced a, just a ton yeah. of titles. And there's not, I don't think there's a single one of those titles that doesn't, that doesn't pique my interest, that I won't be at least picking up number one of. And I'm not picking up the number ones because they're number ones. I'm picking them up because all those books sound like they're going to have something in them that could be really cool. I'm thinking, okay, let's start doing the math. That's an extra six titles. Where the hell am I going to? Yeah. They know, don't all where come am out I going to afford that? And what am I going to cut? Yeah, but they don't all come out at the same time, so. Well, and, and if you're, they're you're mini series, right. I'll, I'll give them more consideration if they're mini series. You know, like uh, like a Model's Blade. Okay, it's a four issue run. I'm enjoying yeah. that. But if it comes back as a permanent run. Uh, you know, because since I like the miniseries so much, now I have to decide: do I want to continue with the? With yeah, then you got to decide if you want to pick it up or do you want to drop something else. Yeah. Right. I'm getting right, and I don't know. I, I don't know it. that they announced those as being miniseries or those are ongoings. I don't think they really said. Like this no. Lazarus book, it's seventy issues. Greg has planned seventy issues for that book. So. Wow. Yeah. You know, that's not that's not a miniseries. That's a commitment. If you're wanting to get the. That's a full run. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, I really um, want that the Brew Baker Epting one. That's the one I think I like the best. Is that the is that the one that's kind of the spy one? The Velvet, I think is what it's called. Yeah, Velvet, right? Where it's the like the the you know kind of the what's what's her name from James Bond the. Um, Miss Penny, what, what's the secretary? The secretary basically ends up going out into the field. She ends up being Money there. Penny. Yeah, right. Money, Thank you. Money Penny. She ends up, you know, basically ends up being the care, you know, going out in the field stuff. That sounded really cool. There's a, like what Rick Remender's got like what three books, two books. Yeah, like two, that, three. He's... I think I liked all of them. Oh, I, I know. That's what I was thinking too. I'm like, oh, <laughs> that that dark science one or black science? Is it black science? Can't remember the title yeah, now, but that one sounded really really that, cool. All painted book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then Craig was excited about the Walking Dead stuff that they announced for it. Like, oh yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about that. that. Yeah. It's going like, bi-weekly. Is that what it's going to be, or every yeah, week? Like so every many two weeks. Yeah. Walking Dead is going bi-weekly. Yes. Yeah. Starting, Starting in October. October. Yes. All Out War. Yeah, I stopped reading it. So. And how long is it, how long is it going to do that? Do you remember what they said? How long that was going to be? I don't remember. It's like six months or something. I thought. I mean, it's that's the the days <laughs> I thought it was it was a lot when whenever they said it. I remember thinking it was it was a lot. So, Tom, do you read Walking Dead? Do oh you yes. Singles. So yes. how do how do you feel about that? It going twice a month. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> And then the T-shirts or something you're going to have. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that too loud. But uh, if it's going to hurt the art, hurt the story, you know, because if they're trying to, to compress things and, I don't know, wait wait for the TV show to catch up with the book or, or, or get the book where it, it, it decompresses a little bit and wait, you know, for the TV show to, you know. Uh, but uh, 
what I'm really waiting for is that war. That's that uh, what uh, what you just said. It's coming up. It's going to be between uh, Dagon and uh, uh, King Ezekiel. Ezekiel. That's going to be a major battle. That's going to be like something out of. Uh, uh, I don't know if you ever read uh, Stephen King's uh, The Stand, you know, where oh, the, yeah. the, the good well, and the ultimate evil. Just... Is somebody going to find a weapon? One, 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 one style of weapon, like they didn't stand. They had the atomic bomb that they found. They're going to mm -hmm. find one weapon that's going to blow everybody away, and and that's because Walking Dead has to end some way. <laughs> you know? Is okay. it uh, something that they're going to find that eliminates all the zombies? Uh, about, like I said a couple of videos ago, who is really the Walking Dead? Is it the people who who survived the, the Holocaust of Holocaust of all these uh, zombies, or is it the zombies? You know, you, you've got to determine because they, you, as human beings, you know, human beings. If, if you live with somebody long enough, you're going to start hating them. No matter how good that person person is, no matter what side you're on, you're going to hate them. Not hate him to the part where you want to kill him, but hate him to the part where you just want to say, "Well, you shut up." <laughs> and that's they basically for, for the Walking Dead. That's it. There's these, you know, one guy is I'm going to be the king, or one guy I'm going to be the leader, or one guy. Come on, can't we just all get along? You know, and you and they can't. So that's what I'm wondering: who's really the Walking Dead? The survivors or the actual zombies? Mm -hmm. But it's going to be interesting when they go by weekly. I mean, are they going to keep how many artists? Is it still going to be one artist? Are they going to have two or three different artists? They're going to bring well, Tony, you know, uh -huh. who they're going to bring back, and that's a lot of writing too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know, know it's it's a war between the four groups or something. That's in it. I'm not reading it, so I don't know. Well, you have Rick's group, and you have uh, Dagon's group, and now yeah. you have King Ezekiel's group. But uh, Rick's group, and it, well, I'm not going to say anything because we have, you know, for, for people who haven't caught up to it yet. Uh, but Ezekiel and Rick, they, those those two. I thought they said there was four groups. Merging. Yeah, there's there's four groups. Who's who's what's the fourth group? Three. Well, you got the kingdom. You've got the hilltop. You've got Rick's group, and you've got uh, the bad guys. Where the uh, Negan. Negan's group. Yes. Well, I thought that isn't hilltop Negan's group. Uh, Hilltop are the is that's where um, um, Maggie went. Oh, that's right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because there's shirts that go with each of the groups. Yeah, that's right. I yeah. saw those shirts. Those are cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't read Walking Dead. I don't get Walking Dead. But I just was thinking from my perspective, being a, if, if one of my titles suddenly went to twice a month for six months. That's a significant jump in in my pocketbook as far as what I'm buying. Um, yeah. I mean, there really aren't too I many independent that. books that do that. No. Yeah, I mean, but I remember years and years ago, Action Comics was bi-weekly. Uh, Detective Comics went bi-weekly for a while. Uh, Avengers is bi-weekly. Yeah. There's lots of Marvel's books that seem to go bi-weekly off and on. So, I mean, and, and I'm and I'm with you, Tom, and the fact that if as long as you can keep the quality of the book, fine. But it seems yeah. to me that most of those books that go bi-weekly, either you're having to swap artists all the time or, or something. Mm -hmm. The writer seems to be able to keep up, but that's a lot of pages. You're talking and, yeah. 40 pages yeah, a for, month. For six months, the, if they're going to do that for six months, they're, they're in a hurry to do something. They're yeah. in a hurry to get to get somewhere. Either that, or this is just the thing to get, to make their event because they can't do an event otherwise. This is their way of, you know, because Walking Dead competes sales wise with everybody now. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, so this is their way of having an event. You oh. know, because they can't have a crossover or anything like that. So this is their way of of making when this does, war thing. Yeah, there's there's nobody to cross over with. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. When does the TV show come back on? Is that when they're starting this? Uh, October. Yeah, October. Okay. October. So that's why I figured they were starting it when the TV. Came back on. Yeah. So I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, the war with the governor Rick is going to be extremely interesting how they handle this because you're given, they're given us so many people that you could choose from, who's going to take care of the governor? And it's only going to come down on a one-on-one -on -one thing. It, you know, I mean, it's it's different from the book already. I mean, how certain mm -hmm. people died and what characters. 
sure. are in the book that are in the TV show and characters that are in the TV show that were never in the book. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how the governor is taken care of. Well, after reading that volume five of the book, I was out on the book. I'm done. <laughs> hey, that is not, it is not for me. Audrey, my wife wanted to, uh, me to ask you if you'd seen the uh, little ass kicker onesies, the Walking Dead. Uh, it says little oh, ass right. kicker. I didn't see yeah, those. We saw those at Spencer's Gifts the other day. Take <laughs> <laughs> everything from that. We uh, they make all the Daryl stuffs I've seen everywhere now. They keep coming out with more of his shirts, and that's why I said I don't think they'll ever kill him off that show because I think people will be so upset. Oh yeah. He, he had like the longest lines when we were at Comic Con and stuff, and I mean it's it's crazy how popular he is. I don't it's think he's, he's bad ass. Yeah, he's probably right. the best character on the show. He's probably not favorite. He is on, on the show. show yeah. He's definitely, yeah. definitely my favorite character. Definitely without a, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yep. <laughs> I mean, how many of us really don't want to take a crossbow and shoot a zombie in the head? You know. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> he's like the nicest guy to meet too. Uh, that like helps it to like him even more on the show after meeting him. He's just so nice. Yeah, everybody I've heard that's ever ever met him has, has said, said the same thing. Well, Michael Roker was 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 something else. I mean, he he looked like he was overwhelmed uh, with everybody. Just you know, wanted to talk to him. So he, 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 he and he, he still was a badass. Just as Michael Roker, <laughs> he had this mohawk, mohawk and he was wearing sunglasses, yeah. <laughs> and he was just he was having an absolute ball just meeting everybody. But he just seemed to be so overwhelmed by the attention; it was just like he couldn't yeah. get it. Yeah. That's how Norman Reedus seemed too, because he yeah. still seems so shy for how popular he is and stuff. And you just—he's such a quiet guy, but really nice to everybody and talk to everybody. I mean, it's just crazy. He got—I think—I don't think they expected. The popularity that he got from that. Yeah, he was cool in the Boondock Saints, though, too, you know? Oh, yeah, Boondock I, Saints. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I won't talk about the second one, but Boondock Saints was. <laughs> I, li I like both of them. I, li but I think first, the first yeah. one was the best one, but I like both of them. Okay, I so. I like the second one a little better. <laughs> so, any other indie books we want to talk about tonight before we move on to the Marvel books? Uh, that's all my independence. I like to say. Get Dark Shadows. <laughs> Get Dark Shadows. Really, <laughs> trust me. It, it's you know you, you don't have to know anything about the TV show to like it. I don't use the movie as a template oh. for not liking the book. Mm -hmm. The movie was something totally different. A lot of the dynamite stuff is really good. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, I have to see if the shop has it. I'll I'll, I'll pick up an issue and look at it. Okay, Marvel, Marvel books. Mm -hmm. Let, let's talk. Let's talk Marvel. It, Tom, have you read Captain America? I haven't read that issue. Yet. I just happen to have it right next to me. Holy cats! Is I this book it. getting friggin' good or what? Oh, I've you know not never been a Captain America fan. I've absolutely loved this book. I'll probably I'm I'm I know I'm gonna keep reading the book after this whole storyline's done and he's back doing normal Captain America things, but this has just been, has just been crazy. I, I won't, I won't really talk about the end of it because I don't want to, um, I don't want to spoil it for, for Audrey because I know she's, because I know she's reading it, but. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the only issue I have to read. I, I'm caught up to here. Wow. Oh, then I can't Craig, say anything. Craig wow. Already. I can't say anything yet. I'm just going to use Travis's word on this book. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's been really good. I mean, the the okay, way this will, the way this issue you, ends. Who do you think that is, Audrey? Who do you think? Craig, that Craig knew who it was by looking at it. And he said at the end, he's like, "I that's who I thought it was." I knew wow. who it was even before I read the book. Yeah, and, and I like, didn't. I can't say anything. Damn, 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 I didn't. Damn, I didn't. Damn, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't even occur to me that that would be that's. I mean, I just thought it was somebody. I didn't. I guess I didn't think about it that hard as I was. No, no. He said he knew who it was by the time he got to the uh, end. He was like, "That's that's who he thought it was." So. Oh yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. So oh, you yeah. That's issue number eight. He really loved it. So. Yeah. This, yeah. Oh boy, yeah. yeah this Marvel really. So. Because what? You know, what? What? Uh, before I even finished reading it, 
I knew, okay, this isn't what... I can't say anything. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I was trying to get it read before this, but I had to put the kids to bed and stuff. So, oh. <laughs> so, so good. I mean, it, I mean, I, I have to say also, this is the first, this is the first Rick Remender book that I've, that I've read. I, I'm pretty sure the first Rick Remender, and I'm enjoying. Oh. I'm now I'm looking for other Rick Remender stuff just because. Are you reading Uncanny Avengers? No. Holy crap! That is good. Yeah, I got, I got the, I got the first issue. I didn't get into the oh, other, so that's like one of. Oh, it gets. You have to read like past the first two or three. We're not as good, and then it like it got into the Kang stuff, and uh -huh. it's been awesome. Audrey, I'm telling you, if, if you read Captain America, if you don't get to this one part, and you go, whoa, oh. <laughs> yeah. Craig did that when he was reading this book, and then when he was reading Uncanny Avengers, there was something in there where he was like, whoa. You know, it's it's definitely a holy crap moment. Yeah. Yeah. I knew those were yeah. the two uh, books that I know he read and kind of did that reading. Yeah, I was, re I was reading this book, and we got to the point where the wow thing happens, and I was like, what the? And my entire house is like, what? What's going on? Did you cut some other finger? <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> it was... It was, it was it was pretty. It was pretty impressive. I, I that book was pretty cool. Um, I also picked up the latest issue of FF. Mm -hmm. The only thing I really want to talk about this issue in particular is this cover amuses me. Uh, mm -hmm. For those of you who read Mad Magazine, or have ever read Mega Magazine, or the back cover, you, you can fold the cover together and it makes a picture. In, in mm -hmm. this case, if you were to fold your comic, which I'm not going to, <laughs> if you fold this up, it actually makes. Um, it actually makes Doom's face and actually brings the two F's together, so it's actually FF. But I thought that was kind of funny. Oh, it's like the back of a Mad magazine. Yeah, yeah. You fold it together and, it, and it'll make Doom's face. Oh, that was oh, kind that's of amusing. Cool. Yeah. There, there's some interesting that's stuff goes on in that issue too. So. I just read Avengers something. Avengers 13. That I thought was really good. I really like Deodato on the art. He needs to stay on that. And I see a change in the next issue, so I'm kind of upset. <laughs> I really, really like this issue with his art and everything. With the, what the heck is that thing? The, the big monster thing. I don't remember what it's called. The Terminus or something. Uh -huh. I love that. Yeah. And all the pictures with, like, that was like a whole page of, like, Thor. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. There was like several where Thor had the hammer and stuff. I thought was really awesome. That's as current as I am on Avengers, so I'm <laughs> behind on that too. The only Avengers <clears throat> book that I'm currently reading is Young Avengers. We don't get that one. Which I which I find really fun. It's just kind of a mm -hmm. kind of a fresh, kind of goofy, kind of young young hero book. This this issue is kind of a. <clears throat> They just ended an arc, and I don't know how much this is going to tie into other stuff. I mean, something happens at the end of it to kind of... I mean, these are two new characters that I have no, that I have no idea who they are. Um, this character is the, the brother of Wiccan, I think. And this guy used to be used to be part of the X-Men. He His mutant power was is he could... He absorbs all, all knowledge. So, like, he, know, he, doesn't ha his, he doesn't have any actual superpowers. Well, he used to, but when they took... When the mutants all lost their powers, he lost his mutant power. But he still has all the information, and like he knows everything about people. Like if he hung out with, with um, Cyclops, he would know everything about Cyclops. Like which hand he uses to wipe his butt, even. I mean, it's that crazy how much stuff he knows about everybody. So he knows. So he's working a hotline, a technical hotline. Like if you're in the middle of a fight, you can call up. Like if you have a bomb, you can call him up and go, "I've got a bomb. How do I defuse it?" And he's like, "Well, what kind of bomb is it? Well, it's an alien bomb. Okay." Well, what kind of an alien bomb is it? You know, describe it to me. Does it have a okay? That sounds like a scroll bomb. This do you have a a Richards nine ten thousand that you know under this sequence? This is hilarious sequence of him taking these phone calls. One of the phone calls he takes, he gets this phone call from a from somebody. He's like, "What's your situation?" And they're like, "Electra, um, can you run? You should run." And they're like, "No, no, really, listen to me. You should run." <laughs> well, what do you have to fight her? Swords? No, don't use swords. Size always beats swords. This whole long conversation about how, about how. Look, do you want to be a live ninja, or a dead ninja? This is how you do. This, you know, he hangs up the phone. And he goes, ninjas. You just can't. You know, you can't teach them anything. But just there's a lot of really. It's a fun comic. It's very. 
it's kind of a pop culture, kind of a goofy, and it's just a good laugh. I mean, it's I and I don't know that it's like great literature or anything, but it's just really a, kind of a refreshing <laughs> light comic book that has a lot of funny moments in it. So um, I've I've been pretty excited with it so far. Um, so. Yeah, that's kind of a fun, but that's the only Avengers book I'm actually getting. The other Avenger books I plan on kind of picking up and trade as they come out. But I like the uh, Avengers Arena too. That's got all those kids in it that I had no clue who any of them were, but you kind of right. learned them the whole time. It's it's been really good. That that book kind of surprises me because that was one of those books that I would have said this book that that title is not going to last because it's just mm -hmm. kind of a struck me as being a you know. They're just going to a, a fake or attempt to kill each other off, and that's what the whole title is going to be. How's that book going to survive? But there are lots of people who really like it, that's for sure. It's fantastic. Yeah. Really. They don't kill somebody in every issue. But well, that's it, good. They run out of characters after a while. It happens a lot of times. It's <laughs> kind of like shocking. So I think that's the whole point is they don't want to kill somebody every issue because then you're like, you expect it. But So now it's kind of where something like that happens. It's it really shocks you a little bit as it goes, but... It's been really good. And of course, last week I wrote, I read the, I don't know, famous, infamous uh, pizza dog issue of, of Hawkeye, or as I call it, Hawkeye. Um, I really like this comic, I mean, the title in general. Um, I have mixed feelings about this issue. There's some really great stuff about it and some stuff about it that's like, I, I paid for this <laughs> kind, of, kind of thing. Um, it's all, the entire story is written through the dog's perspective. Um, so it's fun in that way, but at the same time, there's lots of panels that are just like little symbols, and that's it. There's no dialogue in it because, of course, the dog doesn't speak English. So the only thing the dog knows is those words he hears all the time, like pizza and dog and good boy and lucky. But lots of it is like diagrams of what the dog smells and, and, and little symbols. These symbols are associated with what the... Um, what the dog thinks about those people. So a large Aww. portion of the book is that. So it's it's cool, but by the time you're for me anyway, by the time you're done reading the whole thing, a lot of it is okay. I can only get so much what? meaning out of that page. That that page only has so much of an impact on my my emotional reading experience. So, and there were a lot of pages like that. There's some really great stuff in it, but I don't know. I don't know. I know, and I know a lot of people loved it, and so that may make me unpopular because I say I don't know on it. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. I don't get that one. How about how about X Men? James, you get this book, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I like it. I have the two issues. I haven't got to read them yet. It's got the cutest baby in it. Tell you right now that baby is like the cutest baby in comics. Uh, well, on on par with the, the baby in Saga too, but um, but just the cutest little baby. At least I think he's cute. He cracks me up. They the artist does great facial expressions with that baby. I just think that baby's a kid. Baby there nothing else. Right. Well, what's that? The cutest human baby. In Hu human baby. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say, what was wrong with Franklin Richards? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um. I, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying the book. It, it's. Um, I, I think it's interesting. Uh, I think that you know some people are like up in arms of the fact it's all women in it. Basically, so far it all makes sense. The story makes sense. There's, it's not a forced. This just happens to be the people that are around. Yeah, I never feel like. I mean, they, it's not like they're avoiding men. I don't know what the big deal is. Yeah. They, all right, there are female superheroes. Get over it. Right. Well, it's the issue they're called X Men. And, and they do. Uh, they do have their Friday night. Or, you know? Yeah. Extra. Well, it doesn't feel forced. Though. You don't feel like it's you know being pushed in your face. It's just an X Men story. It just happens to be all women in the story. It, it's not. Mm -hmm. I don't even think about it when I'm reading it that it's all women cast. Right. Right. And that's what I like about it. Is the fact it's not. It's not like they've yeah, gone. It's not like they've gone. Oh, we're not, we're excluding the men. I mean, there are guys in the comic. You know, it's not like. So yeah, I think it. I think it works fine. I think if they would have chosen to tell it in a way that somehow they were doing some mission that excluded men, that it would feel really, really fake and crappy. But it doesn't. You know, I. I'm 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 enjoying it. I I have concerns. I like this artist. Some people don't. I like this artist, but this artist is leaving. I understand. Um, and I believe 
somebody with the last name of Lopez is taking over. And I remember reading this book. Brian wrote for a while, wrote the, just the plain generic X-Men book for a while. And there was a Lopez on the artist on it. And the reason I ended up dropping the book before he completely finished his run on it was because I just didn't care for the art. So I'm concerned that that's the artist that's coming back. And that may, that may hinder my collecting this book. I just have my... 100% decided I'll wait and see what it looks like when it comes out, but oh, I'm, in, you know, I'm enjoying it. So are you going to get all the Battle of the Atom issues or whatever that are going to tie in? Um, probably not. Mm. I, we were I getting all of them except for one of Yeah. I tend <clears throat> to avoid um, Marvel event books. They tend to, I, I, they tend to disappoint me more often than anything else. Uh, Fear itself was a disappointment for me. Um, I got to issue three of um, Avengers vs. X-Men and, and couldn't take that, and I've pretty much swore off the event books since then. So, so you're not getting uh, Infinity, then? No. No, I'm not. I'm, to tell you the truth, I'm not really... I'm not, I'm not anti-Marvel, like a lot of people like to point out that I am, but I'm not really interested <laughs> in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the Marvel, I'm not really that interested in the Marvel Universe as a whole. Um... And so most of the Marvel books that I get, I feel like are kind of like off on their own kind of little corner. I mean, they get tied in yeah. occasionally to the rest of the Marvel Universe, but they kind of do their own thing. Um, and that's one of the reasons I collect those books that I collect, because they don't get bogged down in every event book that comes out and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. So you're going to get the, 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 the Son of Adam stuff? Yes, the Battle of the Atom stuff, because we get all of the issues except for the Wolverine and the X-Men, so I'll just go ahead and get that one then. Okay. Then Infinity will get I don't even, much stuff, stuff too. Yeah. So. I don't even know what that's about. What's the Atom one about? I have no clue. Is it, is, okay, so is it, but is it like X-Men exclusive? I mean, is it an event that just has to do with the, the mutants? I think it yeah, is. hold on, it's in the previews. <laughs> It was a page of it, but I don't think it said like a whole lot about what it was. But... It's, it's all X-Men titles, so... Yeah, it's just... A, Is it? X-Men yeah. Battle of the Atom, number one, all new X-Men, X-Men, Uncanny X-Men, and Wolverine and the X-Men. The biggest X-Men crossover yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's because there's more the X-Men book. titles now, so of course it's going to be the bigger one. <laughs> oh, it says, The past, present, and future of the X-Men collide in the 50th anniversary event crossover. Oh, boy. Mm. Yeah. We well, it could be good, because, I mean, a lot of people keep... Right, because a lot of those titles, everybody keeps talking about how good they are. The all-new X-Men, despite me thinking that was is the most ridiculous title for an X-Men book ever. Um, everybody keeps talking about how great that book is, about how great Uncanny X-Men is, so I'm obviously missing the boat somewhere. I'll be picking those stuff up in trades because enough people have talked about how good they are. Um, yeah. So, who, I don't know. It might... I'm not saying it's not oh. good. I just... I don't know. I just figured we were getting all of them except for one issue anyway, so might as well get the one issue. It's going to be a ten-part sure. cross... I don't like wow. that. Hopefully it just stays in those couple titles because we get those titles anyway. Yeah. That was the only thing that always bugged me when they do crossovers. Good. You're always forced to buy titles that you don't collect. Yeah. Like I said, if I only have to buy one extra title, I'm, I'm not that mad. Now, that cover that James is holding there, half of that cover is very Steve Dicko-ish. Yeah. Extremely Dicko ish. Those and Spider Man. Yeah, that's that, that yeah. shadow of Spider Man screams Steve Dicko. Yeah. Has anybody uh, read this or are you guys getting it? I'm not getting any of the Spider Man stuff. I'm just getting I, I superior. Spider Man. But this is so cool. It's This is just like the villains. You're, you're following Boomerang in this. And like. <laughs> Was it planning on it? <laughs> yeah, it. like it's funny. Like it's just I, I don't know. It's a cool story because you have uh, you're you're following this villain around, and it's just like all the crap that goes wrong in his life, and and he's just.
So I'm not sure exactly what's happening. I'm not if I, I'm not sure if I'm on the air or if they're on the air. <laughs> um, Oops. It, I think we all I think we all crashed that time. Yeah, I don't know. all of us. You know, we all froze at the same time. Good. I'm glad it wasn't just me this time. So uh, it was a domino so effect. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, we get um, James and Audrey back because James was talking about. Um, the foes of Superior Spider-Man, which I wanted to hear about because it's a, it's kind of a title I was kind of curious about. Of Nick Spencer is writing it, and I know that sometimes he um, can write some fun stuff. I like his independent work, um, so it was a possibility to pick it up because I've liked other villain type books that are kind of that kind of thing. So um, you're talking about that Spider-Man. Hopefully, we'll get him back here in a minute or two, and he can. Yeah, yeah. I like the it's cover. I'd be kind of curious to see, you know, how I, uh, if it's gonna be. A... What do you think it might be like? The uh, what was that book some years ago? Uh, Foes of Spider-Man or Spider-Man Foes, uh, where it just featured all his uh, all his villains that Spider-Man fought. Yeah. Just the cover looks really good. I mean, as soon as I saw that that, yeah. that Spidey shadow, all I could think. Well, what if it's gonna be like that, that, or if it's or if it's gonna be like. Yeah. yeah. No, no, she's back. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good look of that. That's for sure. Mm. We'll send James a message and let him know that he's um needs to jump back on. <laughs> Let's hear. Because we all crash. Yep. <laughs> That's how everybody started leaving. I was like, oh. <laughs> Not good. I don't like this new setup on my Google thing. Now, well, see if I can get all the James. Yeah, it's it's not very friendly, and so I apologize for anybody who's um, watching and now thinking <laughs> that we're gone or uh, oh, no, sick of the whole thing. So that's kind of they're still here. They're still here. Try our best to not not have the. The technical diffi technical difficulties, but um, we'll get there. Um, Comic Guy Rules says, my question is about Spider-Man, is how come no one has noticed that Parker does not act like Parker anymore? Instead of having a quick joke, he's being a total ass. Oh, Garrett, people have noticed, but they just don't know why he's acting like an ass. I wonder yeah. that too. I was reading Avengers because he's like a huge yeah. jerk in Avengers. And I'm like, why hasn't anybody said anything to him? I mean, like, it's totally different personality and everything. I don't know. We haven't been reading Superior yeah, Spider Man. They, they know there's something well, wrong. They just don't know what right. it is. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, right. I mean, how close are people to actually to Peter Parker's character? I mean, I don't know because I don't read enough of the books to really know. But is are, is anybody close enough to him that they're going to take him aside and go, "Look, why are you being such a jerk?" Or, or I mean, because the books, because I was reading Avenging Spider-Man for a while, you know, after Peter um, Octavius took over being Spider-Man, and um, you know, people would kind of go, "Hmm, he's acting weird," but there was always enough stuff going on that no one really had the time to go, why are you being this way? And before they could ask him that, you know, he'd take off because mm -hmm. he was worried that people would start getting suspicious of him. So, you know, kind of a thing. I don't know. Realistically, is I he, think Captain America you know, would have died. Yeah, see, yeah, Spider-Man, the, the arrogance of uh, Spider-Man was always there, but Peter Parker was never arrogant. And, you know, they're, they're, they're seeing a, a different Spider-Man, but they don't understand why Spider-Man is doing what he's doing. And Right. And, but if anybody should should be, you know, going right into his face and saying, what the hell is wrong with you, it should be Mary Jane. Because if anybody knows her better than anybody else, it would be Mary Jane. But she does have something to sort of sure. I'm not too, too good here. And Jay Jonah just loves him to death now. <laughs> that should be fine, I would think. That, that should be a, everybody's clue, right? Why is Jay yeah. Jonah <laughs> liking Spider-Man all of a sudden? What's, what's, there's something wrong with that. I think we have a couple issues uh, superior, but I was just going to read it and trade them. Yeah, like I said, when I first thought it was the book I wanted to hate. And I can't, because it's really <laughs> freaking good. He's just not one of Craig and my favorite characters, so 
can get some axed out, <laughs> out of there. So we can only pick up so many things. <laughs> it looks like James is trying to get on, but uh, it's, he's not connecting for some reason. Yeah. Which. Ooh. Okay, so we'll, we'll 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 move on. Um, anybody? Other Avenger books? I mean, not Avenger. Jeez. Other Marvel <laughs> books we want to talk about? I, I don't have any others that I really want to talk about. You know, here yeah, now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get Superior and Captain America. Right. Okay. I really liked the uh, the Thanos Rising. Um, That's been good. It's super creepy. Yep. So so does yeah. So does that book pretty much kind of blueprint why he is the way he is and is the monster that he is? Yeah, kind of. I mean, it goes all the way back to when he's born and stuff. You see him from the beginning. And it, it looks like the final issue of that miniseries is going to lead you right into the Infinity stuff. Infinity. Cool. It, it's, it's not making you feel sorry for Thanos and, and understanding why he is why he is. Not really. You just see that he's a serial killer from the beginning. <laughs> oh, you just didn't understand him as a child. He starts out like okay, so, and then, but you can't believe in him, and it's just he starts killing a lot of people. <laughs> For science. Now, in the infinity, in the infinity thing, oh, Black Bolt plays some <laughs> plays some significant role in that in that book. Is that right? Do you know? Um, I don't know. In the Thanos, I mean, he's played a pretty significant role in the uh, New Avengers. Yeah. I haven't read the most current issue of New Avengers, but. I don't. Always, I don't think it ties in. I thought it was just uh, a war between the uh, Wakanda and the Namor and stuff. Uh, okay. Uh, he, he's in that book. Craig likes one of the parts where he's fighting Terax with Black Bolt, but I like the character Black Bolt, so I'm always kind of curious anytime he shows yeah. up someplace as to how they're going to use him. Anyway, J James is back with this. Um, yeah, made it back. We're pretty much. Missed everything about yeah. We pretty much missed out the book you're talking about, the Superior uh, Foes of Superior Spider-Man. So do you want to you want to talk about it again? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Um, you, you follow a, a super villain in this, and um, you kind of just it's all the different dirtbag stuff he does. Like he he gets put in jail, and he's trying to get like his other super villain uh, buddies to bail him out, and <laughs> how he's scamming them into doing that, and. and uh, how he's just crossing everybody, and it's it's funny. I mean, it's it's not a real serious book. Um, you, you're not really rooting for any of the, the characters in it, but it's just funny. Uh, it, it was a good read. Uh, I'd, I'd seen that. Everybody was talking about it on Twitter, so I picked it up just to, to see what it was like. I enjoyed it. I was laughing out loud while I was reading it, so that's always a good sign. Uh, Isn't that an ongoing up then? Yeah. I was going to say, is that a one-issue uh, shot, or is it a uh, miniseries? I think it's going to be an ongoing. I think it's an ongoing. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah there's number three. Is listed. It's got a cool cover in the previews. I like the cover. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a Sinister Six type thing. Like You're, you're falling around. Then it's, it's Boomerang, Shocker. Uh, I don't know who some of these others are, but it, it's, it's pretty funny. Oh, it's been expensive. I didn't know that. I don't know. Cool. I like that cover. I may just get it just for the cover. Yeah. Yeah. It's a two ninety nine book too, so it's one of the you know, one of the few things Marvel puts out for two ninety nine. Yeah. Hmm. Gee, for two ninety nine, I remember when I was a kid, I could buy thirty. Okay, so I think we, I think we talked Marvel. <laughs> That's right. That was that was more than a month's worth of comic books right there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, those those were the days. Yeah. Oh. So I, I think we, I think we talked all the Marvel stuff that um, we had to talk about tonight. Um, anybody getting any back issues or anything like that? that they want they want to talk about. I got uh, a couple of things. Well, I didn't. I don't have the Baltimore's out that I, I picked up the other day. Um, I got the plague. Uh, the plague ships. Um, it's pretty good. Right. The first Baltimore stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I picked up this trade, Phantom Stranger. Um, enjoyed that. Just got uh, this. Uh, 
six issue run, Punk Rock Jesus. Punk Rock Jesus. Nice. I don't know why I didn't pick it up when it came out, but reading the wake and really enjoying uh, Sean Murphy's art, and uh, so I want to see what uh, his writing was about. Uh, Scott Running with Comics talks about it all the time and said it's like his favorite. So uh, I picked it up. I got a heck of a deal on this on eBay, so got a steal on that. And then um, got this uh, Silver Age uh, Showcase 56. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. Oh, Power Man. Psycho yeah, Pirate. Fate. Yeah. Psycho Pirate, yeah. And then, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, Psycho Pirate. Awesome. Uh, and then I got this, uh, which is kind of you know, the new TV series coming out. So I got um, this Nick Fury uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, issue one, which I love this is uh, Stranko cover. Yeah. All, all 18 issues are so good. And uh, yeah, the, was it issue was three, issue four, Frank Bruner's cover was incredible on that one. Yeah, but I absolutely love the cover to that. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a back issues. Uh, oh, I have this one too. Um, I just went for a little bit. Uh, Dr. Um, Fate, no man. First oh, Grundy. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, Showcase 55. Cool, I would say the only one that I got was uh, Where Monsters Dwell, number 21, you know, the reprint of uh, Fin Fang Foom. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it still makes me laugh. Every time I look at this, you know, Fin Fang Foom, uh, what's with the drawers? I, I mean, when, even when I read the issue 40 years ago, I kept saying, why is he wearing a diaper? He's a dragon. He doesn't have to wear a diaper. But it's still, if you can't get the original one, this, I mean, this the first appearance of Fin Fang Foom was great. Pick it up, Joe, local comic book store. Tom, what are those reprints of? These are reprints from uh, Strange Tales. Okay. It's from 1960, uh, Jack Kirby. And uh, the other story is uh, Clutching Hand. And uh, it's three stories, and it's three, three, uh, three reprints. Uh, Haunted and Clutching Hands are the other two uh, reprints. But if you can't get the original copy of the Strange, Ta Strange Tales, I'm dumb. I can't remember the friggin' number. But the second best thing right here. Fin mm -hmm. Fang Foom, one, the great, one of the great Kirby characters ever created. <laughs> well, that's definitely more the Strange Tales. <laughs> Even while he's wearing Pampers. <laughs> because really, think about it. Who wants to shovel up a bunch of dragon? You know, <laughs> it make great fertilizer. <laughs> who, who wants to change the dragon's diaper? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And who's going to?